Friends, I'm Dr. Rose, the Primal Professor. Today we're digging into a big question that pops up in the carnivore and keto circle. Is insulin suppression on carnivore a real thing? Is it a healthy adaptation? Or is it a warning sign? In this video, we'll cover what it really means, what Dr. Bickman and Dr. Rob Sivas say about it, and what the research shows and how you can tell if this is happening to you and how to prevent it or fix it if it becomes an issue. When people talk about being insulin suppressed on carnivore, they usually mean one of two things. One, your fasting insulin is very low because your body simply doesn't need it or need that much insulin to run on fat and protein. Second is that when you suddenly eat a carb heavy meal after being uh, nearly zero carbs for many months, your insulin response is sluggish at first and your blood sugar spikes higher than you'd expect. That's not the same as type 2 diabetes. Instead, it's what's called adaptive glucose sparing. Your muscles are happily running on fat, so they spare glucose for the brain and the red blood cells. This can make an oral glucose tolerance test look worse than your actual metabolic health. So Dr. Ben Bickman, he's amazing. I love watching his videos. He's such a great... Uh, pathophysiologist, um, he explains this very well. He says, if you rarely eat carbs, your pancreas doesn't keep a lot of insulin stored and ready to go. When you suddenly eat a load of carbs, then the first phase of insulin release is smaller, but it recovers quickly once the pancreas remembers it needs that tool. That's why if you're scheduled for an oral glucose tolerance test, you should eat about 150 grams of carbs a day for three days before the test. Without that prep, you can fail a test that doesn't really reflect your health. Bickman also points out that slightly higher fasting glucose paired with very low insulin is usually a healthy state, not a disease. Next is Dr. Rob Sivas, better known as the carb addiction doc. He's, he amazes me with his level of knowledge of physiology as well, but he uses the term insulin suppression in a slightly different way. He sees it clinically in some long-term carnivores and very low carb patients, especially lean athletic types. These people have a very low fasting insulin and C-peptide and a higher lipid uh, pattern, very high LDLs with very high HDL and low triglycerides. Sivis warns that sometimes these patients benefit from nudging insulin up a bit. That might mean adding more protein or timing small carb exposures around training or rebalancing fat and protein ratios. His key point is that this isn't always pathological, but context matters. So what does the literature say? Across the board, ketogenic and low carb diets consistently improve insulin resistance in people with metabolic disease. They lower fasting insulin, they improve your HOMA IR, and they drop your HbA1c. That's solid, but there's nuance. One 2024 study showed that if you don't lose weight, a ketogenic diet may not improve insulin sensitivity as much. So now we know that weight loss does play a big role in, in that as well. Studies also show that a ketogenic meal produces very little insulin compared to a mixed Mediterranean meal. That's expected. And remember, if you're doing an oral glucose test, guidelines say you must carb load for at least three days beforehand. And without that, your results don't reflect your true metabolic capacity. So how do you know if you're insulin suppressed? You might notice that you feel carb intolerant. 
And when you finally eat carbs, things like a bigger glucose spike, feeling sluggish, or having a carb hangover might be occurring. But the real answer comes from the labs. Looking at fasting glucose and fasting insulin and calculate your HOMA, HOMA IR. Check C-peptide, which should be low normal for carnivores, and then very low C-peptide with high glucose is a red flag and not just diet adaptation. That usually means you're an insulin dependent diabetic. So if you do an oral glucose tolerance test, make sure your carb prep is proper is done properly. And don't forget your lipid panel with ApoB, since some carnivores follow and develop the lean mass hyperresponder pattern. So if you want to prevent or fix this issue, here are a few key strategies. First, prioritize protein. Protein naturally triggers a healthy insulin response that supports both muscle and the thyroid without spiking blood sugar. Second, train the system before the test. If you need an glucose, oral glucose uh, tolerance test, rehearse with carbs for three days. And then third, use targeted carbs around workouts if you're lean and highly active. Fourth, lift weights because resistance training improves glucose uptake without needing a lot of insulin. And finally, if your cholesterol and ApoB shoot up into the lean mass hyperresponder territory, talk to your doctor about adjusting macros slightly while keeping your diet animal based. So I was in lean mass hyperresponder territory. And in addition to that, I have a family history of heart disease, and I also have a very high uh, genetic mutation for LP little a. And I worked with Dr. Agustin and we, we tried, um, we had a three tier plan and the first lowest, most less invasive plan was trying Zetia or Zetamibe. And that's not a statin. It, what it does is it prevents you, your intestines from picking up the cholesterol. It blocks it. And usually that has to be combined with a statin. But for me, it did the trick and my, uh, all my numbers reversed and I'm doing well. And I've been on that for a couple of years. So uh, because my risk is extra high with the LP little a, I felt that as though I need to do it. So having that conversation, I think with your doctor is important. So when should you worry? Well, red flags include a fasting glucose consistently above 105 to 110 with insulin not low or a very low C-peptide combined with high glucose, an abnormal oral glucose tolerance test even after carb prep, or an extremely high ApoB and LDL without a clear plan in place. Those scenarios mean it's time to further investigate. So is insulin suppression real? Yes, it is. But in most carnivores and low carb followers, it's a normal reversible adaptation, not a metabolic disaster. Prep correctly before testing, keep protein high, and use small tweaks if you're extremely lean or highly active. I'm Dr. Rose, the Primal Professor. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who's worried about their insulin. See you next time.